Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. If you are new, um, please do hit that subscribe button and then of course don't forget to click that bell if you want to be notified every time I op uh, upload videos, which seems to be like daily right now. <laughs> Lots of content to film. I don't know what to say. Uh, anyway, I wanted to do a fun green hair tutorial. Now, this is not going to be a long one. This is going to be one of those short and sweet ones. Um, and I think it'll work just fine because it's a very simple process with these colors. And of course, the jets are flying by because I got to record a tutorial. <laughs> so hopefully they're not too loud. All right, it is A is for August 2021. Um, that is my hashtag this month as part of my alphabet coloring uh, challenge hashtag. So two tags in one. And if you're watching this, you know, not in August, then this probably won't apply as much. However, the point of the tag was to use all of my mediums they either had a brand or a series name that started with the letter a um, and september will be b so i have a massive queue of hair tutorial combo requests um, from you guys and a lot of them had arteza and the one i wanted to really tackle because it just sounded so fun was green hair if you couldn't tell <laughs> where we're going with this and so yeah we are gonna do a green hair tutorial um, using just five colors. And what you're going to need here is your jungle green, which is A141 in my set. Um, I do need to disclaimer that. I have the old set. I know they've changed some numbers. I don't know which of these have been changed. So the color names are the same though, I think. So emerald green, A094. Spearmint Green, A096. Mint Green, A030. And Spring Green, 8042. Now, this is going to be a little different because Arteza, kind of like a Prismacolor, are silky smooth. And, excuse my chair making all these noises. I'm using a new chair today and I can't seem to find a chair that's quiet. Um... So yeah, anyway, these are smooth, like a Prismacolor. You cannot put as many layers down. Once you do, you're just going to start blending things out and you won't see anything. So this will be a slightly different technique, but it'll actually be easier on the hands. And I wanted to feature a few parts of the hair. So I want to do a little bit of the braid here, just so you can kind of get the, the motion of the in and out and where to put your shadows. Oh my gosh, the jets! <laughs> um, and then I was thinking I would tackle like one of these longer strands for you guys as well. So let's start and do like maybe these two little braided pieces here. Because once you do one, they're all the same. So starting with our lightest color, oh my gosh, <laughs> spring green. So we're going to light coat. Light coat is the keyword here. And the reason for this is because we're not doing as many hair flicking layers, you need some color behind it. So just really lightly fill in that space there. Now these are waxy, these are smudgy, not as smudgy as a Prismacolor, but you know, they, they are pretty close on the smudgy factor. So I do recommend working on hair, you know, opposite of the way your hand moves. So. I'm right-handed, so it would I wouldn't make sense to go this way because I'd just be smushing all over. So I'm starting over here. Now this color seriously reminds me of like toxic green, <laughs> but sent it to a few of my lovely friends who I bounce ideas off of, and they loved it. So I'm like, all right, let's just power through then. Okay, so next you're gonna grab your emerald green, which is not your darkest. Um, the darkest in this one is jungle green, and that will sit right up here because that comes in last. So grab your emerald green. Now, as always with braids, remember this is curling around and tucking in here. This is coming out of the tuck, has its little 
loop, you know, from the braid, and then it's tucking back down in here. So first things we want to do is we want to define the areas where it's obviously going to be darker. Draw a line there, just kind of that. You'll notice I'm not doing as much flicking because, well, there's not much point with these. Um, they're soft. You can still flick, but it's not going to be as intense. Okay, we have that one there. Now down here on this little one, I want to bring out some color from the areas where it's coming out of the braid. I'm trying to make sure my hand is out of your way. I am going to draw a line here just to define it. Okay. Now grab a spearmint green. Same thing, I'm just really lightly adding lines. Nothing too crazy. You can actually get away with not doing the typical flicking motion that I tend to do. You can actually just press and just really lightly press. In fact, you don't want to press hard with these at all because like I said, they'll smoosh right over each other. Okay, now you're going to take your mint green. Now these will not hold a point, which is another reason you're not really going to do the traditional style I've been teaching you guys. Um, but this will be a good, you know, way to ease yourself into doing this with Prismacolor. Don't get me wrong, it can be done and it still looks pretty. I mean, look, we still have definition here. Um, it's just those really fine details. If you really want that hair to pop like it's got strands, you do need a harder lead that kind of pokes out in a way. <laughs> or an X-Acto blade is another way around that, and I will show that in a different tutorial. Okay, now we're taking our darkest color, which is Jungle Green. We are going to first put this in the little spot there. I'm also going to draw a line right there, defining where those two pieces stop from one another. The reason I save this one for last is I want this on top of everything. Because these colors smush each other out, you want your dark color to go down last and be the last layer. So you're basically smushing it on top of everything. Smush. But yeah, if you were to put this layer down first, after all the other layers came through, they just, they wouldn't, this wouldn't show up as defined pretty much. I'm going to draw my line there, and then same thing down here. I don't know why my paper is all crinkly. It's making for an awkward hand position here. So see, I'm just kind of adding that in. It does get dusty, it's just crumbly. Arteza wanted to be like Prismacolor, and they got that part down. Okay, I am going to take, because I feel it's a little lackluster, I think I'm going to grab my uh, Spearmint Green, just to add a little bit more. But I'm going to try and not go over where I just put my dark color, because this will, with how opaque these are, cover it up. So I don't want to do that. Okay. Now, back to our lightest color, spring green. You're literally just going to color it in. Now, lightly do this. Do not press hard. Um, if you press hard, you're going to blend everything together and kill all that definition you just made. Now, if this was like a harder lead, wouldn't be an issue because it wouldn't smush everything together. But this is a soft lead, so you need to keep that in mind. And, ta-da, green hair. 
So you just keep doing that for the braids. Um, you can always go back if you feel you need it a little darker here and there. Like say maybe I wanted a little more shadow here. I'll just pull it out a little more. And you can go as much or as little as you want. Like I said, you know I'm going to sit here and fiddle with it if you give me the opportunity. So let's move on. Okay. I want to pick a really good strand to do this with. Um, let's just do this one here at the end. It goes all the way down. It curls all the way around. Down to here. So let's do that. All right. Take your spring green. Again, our lightest color. And just, I'm going to ignore this clump here. So just draw a line if we have to. Just do the light layer. Hold your pencil back if you um, have trouble with pressure control because these are very soft. We don't need to smush them down. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. <laughs> you know the jets, I, I, I'm not even kidding. They were not flying until I turned this on and then, yep, it's like, hello. So I swear that Air Force Base has a beacon. Maybe they're just anti-YouTube. They're like, no one can film. Okay. So again, not going in with our darkest color. We're going to our second two darkest, which is emerald green. Now we have a lot going on here. We got a lot of twisties, we got a lot of shadow, we got a lot of highlight. So this is gonna take a teensy longer, but not as long as if we were using like a polychromos. So I'm just going to add some color. I wanna define that a little. Kinda of just pulling it out wherever. And there is, I wanna kind of break that up there. Okay, I add that down there, Get down here at the bottom, oh my goodness, what are they testing today? <laughs> away from the Air Force Base, but I was wrong. I'm still in their flight path. Okay, down here also, because see it's twisting, so we're gonna have some shadows. Like I said, it's okay if the lines are a little thicker here. I'm going to pull some lines here because as the hair is curling back around, we are going to have a little bit of a shadow there. And same thing here, we got a shadow. This one will be a little unique because I want the ends to be lighter. Okay. We'll work our way back to the top. Spearmint green. I didn't do color cards for this one, and that was just because I'm doing this, you know, live with you. Well, real time, I should say. Um, so there's no need. I usually do the color cards if I'm going to be speeding this up but we're just doing this it's a nice short tutorial this is mariola budek's uh wedding hair inspiration so i'll make sure to link to that below it's a very very pretty collection all of them are pretty i don't think that i don't think she's ever put out something that i'm like oh but the this one i've noticed has a lot more just straight up hair ones not complaining, actually, because you know I'm scared of skin, so I'm like, woo, just hair. Sign me up. Okay. This section here will be a little darker because we got a big curve going on. I 
reminds me of the Joker's hair. That's what I was worried about when I first did this. So I sent it to um, a few of my friends. And I was like, what'd you think? Does it look like she went swimming in a toxic waste <laughs> pool or something? But I'm getting like serious Joker vibes. Maybe that was what I intended all along. So we're going to bring this down, but not to the ends, because the ends are going to be lighter. Okay, now you're going to take your mint green. And this one I really want to drag into the highlight as much as I can. Now keep in mind, these long strands are going to be lighter than up here because this hair is all tightly woven together in a braid. Obviously this is going to be extra shadowed with these braids surrounding it. Whereas once the hair is free to flow, it's going to be lighter. So keep that in mind. If you're going for something more realistic, you want to keep in mind where the light would be hitting. You never want to make hair like 100% uniform because obviously things like a braid will throw off the lighting and all that. And it's really important to keep that in mind when you're going for a more realistic hair. Just good practice. I did just film an Art and Fly brown hair tutorial. Not gonna lie, I don't know which one will post first. <laughs> I'm trying to belt out all these A's for August tutorials. So I'm like, ah. Okay. And down here. You will notice this is a lot less flicking, so this is easier on the wrist, and I'm actually using a pretty light pressure. Because it's such a soft lead, it requires like minimal effort here. There's no reason to press hard whatsoever to pull this off. Down here, I do want a few of those. Okay, now we're going to brush it off dusty little things okay now obviously this is super light right now but before I start adding in any other colors I want to first go with my darkest color jungle green and add our shadows and see how that looks before I start adding extras of anything but I'm going to make you dizzy for a moment and change the angle there we go try to do that gentle Okay, so up here we're going to have a shadow. I'm actually going to draw that line in a little more. Now here you may have to press just a teensy bit harder depending on how waxy the buildup is. But I really want to define these shadows before I go and add anything else because see how it's already transformed from here to what's down here? So definitely, before you go adding any other colors, check your shadow, see how dark it is, and if it really needs to have anything else added. I guarantee it will, but I'm just saying, <laughs> check first. Okay. See in here, I definitely have some shadows in here.
my hand is still in the way even though I moved the camera. That's the hardest part. I get into hair like zen mode and then I'm like, did you even see what I just did? <laughs> it's a really bad habit I need to fix. I'm trying really hard to be more like aware of where my hand is when I'm doing these videos, but it's sometimes so hard, especially once you just get into that groove. Okay. We've added our shadows, which have already taken it to the next level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my spearmint green. Just pull out a few here and there. So want that one there covered. Yep, the jets are on their way back. I can hear them. here I want this a little darker because this is a pretty deep curl that's not going to have a lot of light hitting it. Alright, and then we'll pull that one out a little. Okay, same thing down here. I want to pull this a little. Okay, now dust off very gently. Grab your lightest color, which is the spring green. I'm just going to really lightly fill in our highlights just to see where that gets us. And then we can see what else we need to add, if anything. I call this a short tutorial and it's like 20 minutes long. <laughs> but it is short. Um, I'm just doing it all in real time. I'm telling you, hair takes time, but it's so relaxing to me. I know a few of you have commented that it stresses you out. <laughs> but to me, I'm like, oh, so zen. I could color hair for days. Just tell me a color and pencils and I could do it. But now filming it is a totally different thing. Because I'm like, well, I need to do this. And... All right, so down here at the bottom, I am going to flick this one in because... I'm going to do it kind of thickly, thickly, that didn't sound right, but I think that's the word, just to cover up some of the grayscale, but I really want that at the bottom, because you know, the ends of your hair capture some light, wow, was I even on frame when I did that? <laughs> okay, so looking at my hair here, it is catching more light, obviously. But I have a few areas I want to um, correct. So I'm actually going to grab my emerald green. Just kind of add some spots here and there. Because while I do want it lighter, I don't want it like a completely different hair color. was going to mix yellow into this, but I think that spring green has enough yellow to pull it off. Okay, then just grab your um, mint green. I'm just going to do one final round with that to kind of help add some brightness, make sure our highlight area is not too wowza. Again, you don't have to go crazy with the pressure on these, and you want to be very cautious that you don't mix anything. Okay, I'm going to just take my light color again, um, spring green. Just kind of fill in anywhere where I have a little bit of 
too much white showing. Again, light pressure so that you don't blend this. Stay on frame. Okay. And we have green hair. Let me see if I can lift you guys up without making anyone nauseous. <laughs> it makes me nauseous. That's why I always say it. Okay. So as you can see, it's going to be darker up here, which is what we want. And then we want it to be a lot lighter down here because this hair is just saying, hello, sunlight. Whereas this hair up here is kind of just hiding in the shadows. So you will have that. So your entire braid, you want a little darker. So you want a smaller um, highlight area and you want to bring a lot of your darker colors into the center. Whereas, you know, here we're wanting to lessen that and only add the shadows where necessary. Like this section here would be darker, obviously. And then same thing at the crown. You will have it pretty dark coming off the braid, but you want to really preserve that highlight. So I will continue working on this and share my final product. Is it all on frame there? Almost. Um, final one on Instagram. But, you know, if you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments below. And I will be trying to get out another hair tutorial this month. Not with Arteza, um, probably something different. But let me know what you think of this one. If you want more Arteza, you can always add to the list. Don't worry, I'll get through that list as quick as I can. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me while we colored some green hair. I hope I taught you something, and until next time, take care.